season two of the Pat and JT podcast. Oh my, now I'm here at last. The best time, always gonna be the best. Come on. Exclusively on the Herd App Media Network. Right. Might as well start off a Monday with a couple of text messages. And this one, uh, Kristen, this was from Kristen, and it's for you. It's uh, yeah. to 402 403 9478. It's just a picture of, I don't know if that's Captain. Is that, that's, is that, that's Picard. To Picard, okay. I'm not a star. Trek. Track. Uh, <laughs> I almost said wars. I didn't want to get punched. Uh, it says he's sitting there in his chair in the captain's thinking. chair thinking, thinking, a little thinking thing. Uh, it says, I need new conspiracy theories because all my old ones came true. Right? Yeah. Thanks, Just line Kristen, up and for say you're welcome. Mm-hmm. Or I'll say you're welcome. Just line up. You're welcome. <laughs> yeah, you guys, you, you and your little camp have had some uh, pretty big wins over the last 10 days. And it's not even wins, I guess. It's more because it, there is It's kind of wins because when you're wrong, when people, everybody thinks no matter what it is, they think you're wrong. And all of a sudden, you know, you're proven and right on whatever level it is, it kind of feels like, see, I told I'm you. I'm just glad not, I'm just glad to see people not, I, I'm not looking for I told you so's. Just don't look at me like I'm, like I'm crazy. Don't look at me like I have two heads. But isn't I told because, you so kind of fun though? <laughs> it kind of is, yes. but I don't want to turn anybody off because I want them to keep, to, to keep going. I don't want them to be like, oh, begrud- begrudgingly, okay, fine, you got this one right. And I don't know why people would do that. If, if you know? things that they fought against and they, it's proven the other direction and it's for good, yeah. why would people fight it no matter what it is? I don't know. Because it, 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 it upsets your entire belief system to a degree because mm-hmm. you, you realize, oh, my God, I, everything that I believed to be true. It's kind of like if, if somebody all of a sudden was able to prove to you that the earth was flat. And you 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 were bought in hook mm. line and sinker. You it's round, it's round. Yeah, but you've never seen it three D. You've never been able to see like clay has. Right? You've never seen it right. Yeah, and so if somebody was able to prove or or just just take something that you, you know bedrock, you know, like you think about people who <laughs> this is shake your world. Somebody finds out as an adult they were adopted, mm-hmm. right? And it just shakes their their core, right? Because everything else, that, that's just a given, mm-hmm. right? That was a given. What are, you, what are you talking about? That wasn't something you even questioned. Yeah, right, right. So no, just, yeah, I get that. It shakes your world, you know? And, and so some of these things, yeah, some of the things, it's just so fun to point and laugh at people. And that's been, I've been pointed at and laughed at. And I'm like, you know what? I don't care. Mm-hmm. That's okay. I've, I've accepted that's my truth. That's where I live. <laughs> I get pointed at and laughed at. That's my truth. <laughs> that's just where it is. <laughs> or they shake their heads like, like okay. Yeah, she's special. Her on the head. That's, <laughs> that's a cute idea. Shake their heads and look at me like, where did well, she Well, and a lot of times, and I've, and you know, you've been the conspiracy, <laughs> and conspiracy theory sometimes seems, um, it's we, negative because it that, is negative. That, that term was brought up. I told you this. That mm-hmm. term was developed in the 50s, 40s, and 50s yeah. when the government started to be surveil yeah. their citizens. And they needed to, especially like the Area 51 stuff, uh, um, any, anything like that, the government programs, if they wanted to discredit people, you would call them a conspiracy theorist. Right. So there's a huge negative connotation to that. That was huge. developed. And sometimes conspiracy, and I'm not saying you all the time, sometimes you do this. <laughs> Some of your people have done this, where it's like, my oh people. my God, coming up August 4th, next year, it's happening. <laughs> Shit's in the fan. No. And, then, and then it doesn't happen, and you're like, okay, see, I, I believed you, I believed you, I believed you. It didn't happen. They're like, oh, no, 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 no. It, I mean, it's next Okay, let one. me say this. And then, and then it doesn't happen, but, but, but you, now, now stuff's happening. Shit's happening. Yeah. I know it has. Yeah. Like, like Nostradamus. Not everything Nostradamus said happened. Mm-hmm. Maybe not exactly as he said it would happen, but yet you still watch the documentaries about the dude, don't you? Yeah. And you still see the things that he, the correlations that he made and the, the series of events that would lead up to X right. and the names that were the same or the places were the same. And it's like, that's just, that's good enough for me. Yeah. And granted, he missed more than he hit, but so did Babe Ruth. Right. But all I'm saying is he was still the greatest, right? And I think any of us could sit down and say, I bet in 2025, uh, we're gonna, we, could, we could throw out like five or six different predictions and we'd get 20% of them right, but we'd still be idiots. Absolutely. But, but, but like him, for some whatever reason, like because he had he some big ones. he was writing with a quill. He was <laughs> writing a, with a quill by candlelight. That and doesn't he was, make him smarter. <laughs> that, that does that, not make him, so, quills don't make you smarter. Smarter than That's a keyboard That's because warrior. all he had. If he had a keyboard, Nostradamus or whatever, <laughs> he would, have used, would have used a keyboard. He did, that's all he had. That's all he had. So that's what makes it, though, he took the time. I mean, think how time consuming that was. What else was he going to do? What else was he, was he dating? What he, else was and, he and doing? And also he was, it was like heretic. It was like, oh my God, you dare to say some of these things because you could get killed for saying those things. Yeah. At that time. Yeah. 
So and nowadays it feels like it too, but whatever. It's called canceled now. <laughs> right? Now you get canceled. You don't get killed. Yeah. Oh but my in, God. In essence, it's the same thing. Same thing basically. So, so yes. Yeah, so anyway, yeah, there are some conspiracy theories that were out there. They were called conspiracy theories. They weren't. There's been evidence that has come forward that we've been talking about for over a year and everybody's eyes rolled back in their heads when I would bring up any of the conversations. Like, where are you hearing this? Is that from that raccoon you, account that you follow? I thought I hid my Is face that, when you would right? tell me those stories. You actually saw my eyes rolling back in my head. <laughs> you got dizzy. I saw it. <laughs> you had to sit down. But yeah, it was from the raccoon account I followed or it was from the whatever. Go ahead. I don't care. That's because half the... Stuff you bring to the table is from <laughs> accounts that are run by cats. Not that. And no. raccoons and turds. <laughs> turds. The cat turds right. is a great one. See what I mean? It's but, like, <laughs> it's, it's never journalist MD, blah, blah. It's always because the, the raccoon Interesting, too. We had a conversation just this morning from somebody who went to, to journalism school, uh-huh. right? And she's bailed on it because yeah. she doesn't believe in the direction it's going because there, show me a journalist mm-hmm. nowadays it's it's not it's like there's a party line and i'm not saying red and blue there's a journalism li- journalism right. line this is what this is the this is the line we tow mm-hmm. yeah because we want to get clicks so we got to make sure we say x y and z it's all about the clicks you got to sensationalize everything you got to fabricate yeah. you got to bring yeah 100% and you can't just read a headline and and retweet it because a lot of times the headline has nothing to do with the story mm-hmm. Because they're wanting you to click. Yeah. Well, and, and with yeah. even I'm watching stupid videos on Facebook this week, and I saw a family alligator whatever show goes terribly wrong. And then all it did, the, I watched a stupid three-minute video. <laughs> it says, watch to the end. Wait for it. Wait for it. The only oh thing it did God. is the alligator didn't eat the chicken it was supposed to. Like, it didn't go wrong. You, when, you, when something goes wrong, you assume you a child got eaten. 100%. I thought some, a baby was going to get swallowed. Nope, he just didn't eat yep. the chicken, and people were disappointed in the crowd. That's so it's like you so see the headline, true. it's so, sen- so sensational, and mm-hmm. you want to see this, you click it, and then you're disappointed. So then you end up not believing any of the headlines. Right. Right, hundred percent, hundred percent of the time. Right, and I totally understand that. Yep. So yeah, so one of them that came true, as a matter of fact, I'm going to throw this one out here. I, I don't know if I've told you all the story before. I think I have about why we use trees for paper instead yeah. of hemp. Uh, you, and, yeah, you did. T- I remember you. T- I don't know if that was on our <laughs> podcast or if you just told me in the office. <laughs> the whole, the whole. That's just like one of those. It's like let me just give you an example of something mm-hmm. of how the government works. Right, we use trees for paper. That's because the tree industry, we'll call it the lumber and whatever you want to call it, they have way better lobbyists than the hemp people did, mm. and they discredited the hemp people because voodoo, it's a drug, right? You, you, you know that that was that was the big thing was it was oh you don't want to use it because hemp oh my god and now we know better right? Mm. Well back then that's what they had was a better lobbyist and that's where the tree industry then was accepted and the hemp industry was discredited until. A hundred years later, right? And right, now which you is look absolutely at, crazy. Because hemp is such a renewable source, mm-hmm. you wouldn't have to cut down entire forests to make school books. Yeah. Which they did. Which makes total sense now. <clears throat> right? Yeah. And you look back and you think, man, and somebody got rich because I'm the guy with the lumberjacks and I made buku bucks, ha, mm-hmm. ha, ha, you know, we and, it beat, and it's like, and it's rich people fighting each other. So it's just a little... Um, Basically, you know, one guy getting one over on on one of his buddies. Ah, I won that round. You know, right. so I'm the lumber yes. guy, so I got all the money. So the hemp dude's like, damn it. Mm-hmm. All right, now what's next? So this comes out, and from NPR. Okay, so I, this is not from a raccoon account. Okay, <laughs> well, some, some <clears throat> not that could, I'm a huge fan of NPR across the board, but <laughs> <laughs> but I, I pulled that one out just because when I saw the story and I saw who it was credited to, I was like, get out of here. Mm-hmm. Fifty years ago. This is the headline. Sugar industry quietly paid scientists to point blame at fat. So 50 years ago, and we're talking in the 60s, that, that there was these, these internal documents that they found that the sugar industry downplayed the risks of sugar mm-hmm. in the 60s in order to gain favor and, and point the blame at fat, which then in turn pointed the blame at, say, oh, I don't know, red meat, mm-hmm. yeah. uh, when actually your bodies need fat. And, and actually, they do better with that than they do with sugar, and sugar is a quiet killer. Mm-hmm. And now, since the 60s, look at the, the overall weight of the country right. has skyrocketed. It's totally true. And there's sugar in everything. Things you can't even imagine that there's sugar in. There was sugar in my Bloody Mary mix. Right when I was drinking my bloody, oh, we'll talk about that, why I was doing it. But anyway, a yeah, sweet and salty bloody Mary. Oh. Mrs. T's or Mr. Mrs. T's. Mrs. Mrs. T's. Mrs. T's. I, I bought some of that this weekend for uh, my red beers I had. This yeah, weekend. look at how much sugar's in that crap. I was, oh, I looked at the can. I'm like, are you really? Was yeah. it the spicy or not spicy? 
Mine was just the regular. It was on the plane. I don't remember. I didn't so care. Good. I was like, give me another, <laughs> give me another plane, which I called the little bottles. Yeah. Plane, the planes. Mm-hmm. I want, I need another bottle because they're so little. I'm just glad that they're serving those now because they were during yeah. COVID. They didn't serve alcohol. Well, I don't know if they served everybody because I will say I was in first class. Well, fancy pants. Right. What? Um, but anyway, back to the sugar okay, thing. We can look to, that up later. That's one of my conspiracy who theories. Are that, you hello, in first thank class? You. Um, yes, I was on a trip and, um, it was kind of last minute, and as luck would have it, the price for the first class tickets was about the same as the regular price for economy. Don't know why, because the people I went with, they were in row twenty six. You weren't. I wasn't. That's a total. They flex. walked by me. I was in seat one A. Oh, I bet they were pissed. <laughs> so okay. So what made you? What made you? I I don't. I've never priced first class ever. Just I always assume yeah. it's so expensive. What made you price first class? Uh, I was just curious. I was just curious what it would cost to. Well, now to, I'm pissed because I of all the flights, I'm like, why didn't I just check just and check. see? Did you just, do? Did you buy economy and then upgrade, or buy for all first I class was, out the gate? I just searched honestly. I just and this is something else to remember too. When you're looking up tickets for things and you're checking back for prices, use incognito um, because the the websites that you're going to they remember you, mm-hmm. especially the airline sites I've heard that and before, and yeah. agency sites too. They remember you, and the prices are adjusted accordingly. Because they know you've already been there and seen this price. Or they know you've, you're searching around. You've been to travel you've lots. Been you've been this, to other places. Right? Yeah. So use incognito that. to begin with. Um, and I used that. And then just, I just, well, I went to Cozumel. Okay. So I just looked up Omaha to Cozumel flights. That was it. And just see what popped up. So it ended up being United had the best price. And so I'm looking for the dates that I needed. And then I was like, wow, that's, they told me about how much it was going to cost to fly round trip. I was like, Huh. Because it was, it was less. I said, well, I wonder what first class is. Because in my mind, I'm already at a set point. You're playing with house money, right. Right? I'm at a set point already. So I'm like, I'm good with that price. Yeah. But now it was less for economy, way less. And I was like, well, what's first class? First class was still less than my set point. I mean, that's a no-brainer then. Well, I'm going first class. And, and then I, I bought it because I thought, surely there isn't, it's not going to be available because there's only so many seats, right? Mm-hmm. Cause, and the planes were full, both, all four legs, because we went through Denver going down, came through Houston coming back. Um, it completely packed and nope, all the seats were open in first class. All of them. That's so I was crazy. Seat 1A, 1A, 2A, 2A. Unbelievable. Um, and the reason and this, I'm so glad I went to 2A. Somebody, somebody grabbed 1A, whatever. 1A is shit. I'm just going to say right now because you have nowhere to put your crap. Oh I'm just going to say. That's going to be the name of our part. 1A is shit. Because you have nowhere How? to put your crap right in front of you because you put things under Look, the seat you're in front already, of you. You're already complaining about first class. <laughs> You've been in first class four times in your life, all on this trip, and you're already complaining about one. I know. I know. I found that out. That was a lesson learned. I will never do that again. So now 2A is awesome um, or 2 F, whatever, if you like Windows. Since we can't cuss in the description, I'm just going to name this Asterisks. one. 2A is awesome. <laughs> okay. But God. that was the first lesson because I get on 1A and I'm like, where do I, you have to put everything in the overhead bin. I'm like, but. <laughs> oh, yeah, because, oh, that's right, because it's the wall right in front of you. So yes. I, would think, I would think 1B would be crappy too then. It is. All of 1 is bad. 1 is bad. 2 is awesome. 1 is awesome, no matter <laughs> no. what. 1 is awful. 2 is no. awesome. <laughs> Okay, whatever. <laughs> oh my god! As far as first class goes, any of any other seats because you have a place to put your stuff. Yeah. Um, and then they had the in seat television, so you could watch Direct TV on the way down. It was anything. So you this is to why watch. you got uh, cocktails. Probably the steerage in the back didn't get cocktails, did. but you're did. sitting up there getting popped in first yeah. class. Yeah, she comes around. She's like, "What would you like to drink?" And they, I mean, we were still climbing, and I'm like, "Seriously? Like, <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's go with that Bloody Mary." You know, mm-hmm. she comes back and she gave me two planers, which two planes, two bottles. And a thing of uh, Mrs. T's. Did you have two Bloody Marys or one strong one? I had three. Three? <laughs> one was strong. <laughs> How much was is a plane or on a plane? It was free. Oh, my gosh. Where I was. <laughs> I don't know. It was free where I was. And now I want more titles. Okay. And then um, flew into Cozumel. Cozumel's airport is about the size of Grand Islands. Mm-hmm. It's got three gates, I think. Um <laughs> And so, and, and the runway's not very long. It's like, see, so you're coming in from the west. And, and they and Cosmo, slam those brakes on. Yeah, it's like a little island about 12 miles off the coast of Yucatan Peninsula. So it's just west of Cos, uh, Cancun. Okay. Right? So it's just to the east, east of Cancun. So it's a 12-mile patch of water, this waterway that goes through there. And then you hit, and the, the island is 30 miles long and 10 miles wide. Oh, geez. That's it. 
And so when you come into land, it's like right where the water stops, there's the runway and ahead of you is the forest. And it's not a forest, it's more like a big thicket and you better stop. And that's the runway in and out. That's it. One guy. One guy. One guy. Yeah. <laughs> and so, yeah, it was interesting that the, I didn't, I didn't care at that point because, you know, first Bloody yeah. Marys. Um, but yeah. I'm never not going to not check first class now. Knowing that that's a possibility. It. It's just a possibility. Because you just never think. You all, you automatically, maybe first class had uh, better lobbyists than the steerage <laughs> because they, have, or the other way around. Um, I don't know. You just, you, you, yeah, just, just I got check. upgraded once to first class. It was like, gosh, I was like in my mid twenties. Didn't even appreciate it at the time. But I remember <laughs> before, while people were still getting seated, they were handing like mimosas out. Yes. Like what? It's like it was like. Would you people get out of the way? We're trying to serve losers. The first class. You know, yeah. You feel awful. Do you remember it, they used to shut the curtain? Yes, they, they don't do that anymore. Mm-hmm. Well, at least um, not that I noticed. Yeah. I do. I do like the getting on and off portion of oh. the first class thing. That you're out of there. You don't have to wait oh. in line for everybody. It was it was crazy. Get off the plane, and we had to deplane on the tarmac. Mm-hmm. So there was because it, like I said, it looks like Grand Island Airport. Is super fun. It's just a little one story building, and it's got the gates, and you walk in. But yeah, being in front. Got through, and then you have to go through customs, and their <laughs> customs is really technologically advanced in the fact that you you get all your stuff, they stamp your passport, all that good stuff, yay, and then you have to go over here, and there's they're going to take a look at your bags, so they run it through the, the thingy, and, and the x-ray machine they do have, uh, and I'm not saying that they were behind. I just, I loved it because this is profoundly random as opposed to what happens in most American um, mm-hmm. airports when they decide who they're going to search yeah. and who they're not. They didn't. They they don't leave it up to human error at all. They walk up and there's a button, and you just hit the red button, and it either comes up red or green. So it's like a video game. <laughs> and and it's if it's green, go on through. If it's red, put your bag over there. Really? <laughs> that, there is that is so there random. Is no, nobody's putting in their two cents <laughs> worth. You just go up, hit the button, and pray it's green, so, so you can just walk on out. No social bias. No well, anything. It just is what it is. It is what it is. And so yeah, so I was green. I was the first one out the door, and. Load me up and take me to the hotel. I was ready to go. So it was <laughs> That's awesome. hilarious. But yeah, it was, it was, the trip was great. The trip back was um, the last leg. We kept getting delayed, but they had a medical emergency. Had a woman going to labor. Oh, good Lord. Is what I found out it was eventually. And she'd gone into labor on the one flight and it was the plane that we were supposed to get for our last leg. And so they had to land somewhere else. And so they had to call in another crew and then another plane. And then it was waiting for things. And by the time we got home, it was like two in the morning. That's it rough. Was, it was a long day. How many airplanes? Um, as far as not flying, (laughs) (laughs) I did not drink any on that final. How could you not? That would be, that would be the, I know you've been drinking for five straight days on a beach and it was pitch black in the airplane because everybody was going night, night. Everybody was, everybody was at there. That is because we were on the plane for a long time waiting. Also, that was the other thing we, after we finally get our plane, then we all get on the plane and we are out on the tarmac. We're waiting for, um, for them to say, okay, it's your turn. You can slide on in and, and take off. And then all of a sudden, we're heading back to the gate again. Well, apparently, the plane that we had, as it turned out, was the plane that was that had the medical emergency. They didn't find another one. This was the same plane. We had a different crew, but nobody had replaced the uh, first aid kits. Oh, uh, really? And so we needed two new first so aid this kits. This lady legit had a baby on the plane. She the went into labor. I don't know that she had the baby on the plane. I know they had to land an, an abrupt landing somewhere else to get her off the plane. Wow. And so they had the first aid kits were at least opened. used at right, least open yeah. so they had to take them so we had to go back and How get first aid kits you? did you know that and that's why you were going back yep because the captain was pissed i bet you the captain was pissed <laughs> he's like well apparently nobody replaced our first aid kits so we're going back to go oh, get two new first he, aid kits they were lit yeah, uh, he was he was wanting to throw somebody under the bus so hard and then we get back to the gate <laughs> we're waiting on the first aid kits those come in and says well apparently while we were sitting here they found out the gyrocopters or whatever out of whack and so they had to get something lined back up that wasn't Right, another thing, and and so they had to fix something mechanic. It's like we would have been in the air; they well, never even would have known. So, well, it, what did it? Do you need it, a gyrocopter to live? I don't know what it was. It was I can't remember what they. Called so it's them. a good thing they caught it. Maybe I don't know. I mean, whatever. <laughs> you're in first class. You're gonna die. Die in first class. Can I get another drink, <laughs> please. <laughs> Mama needs another airplane. <laughs> yeah, it was it was quite the trip, but it was beautiful. And we and there's one road that goes around the island. And it doesn't go all the way around. It goes about, it goes 10 miles across, and then it goes about 15 miles south. The top northern part of the island, you, you can get there, but I think they're kind of like off-roading it. Um, so we drove the one highway around the edges, 
It stopped at all the little, their little dive bars like every mile or two. And that was all that was out there. And then every once in a while you'd see an opening in the thicket and there was a hacienda back in there. And there were as a gated and you could see it was well manicured oh, how behind amazing is all that? this stuff. So you couldn't see it from the air. You can't see it from the road hardly because the thicket's so thick. Thickish. <laughs> the the That's trees awesome. or whatever that stuff is. So these houses were tucked back in there. But um yeah, the little bars by the ocean. There was a there was a t shirt from Utan. What? The, ro- the rooster what's it called? The bar? Roosters? Rooster something. I can't remember From, what it's called. No way. Yeah, because the bar was kind of like uh, one of those bars where everybody leaves their license. Oh. They, they bring stuff to leave there. Okay. Right. And so there's, there's a Utan, Nebraska t shirt. Yeah. Yeah. Because I was taking a picture of on the wall, there was a sign that said our, our Wi Fi password mm-hmm. and 0000. Yeah, we don't have no bleeping pass or no bleeping <laughs> Wi Fi. <laughs> That's and funny. That's what it said. And then right above it, it says Utan, Nebraska. And I was like, wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> Did you leave anything? No, I did not. Oh, that's all. That's not. funny. Of all places, yeah. yeah. Saw that there, and that was at the Bob Marley Bar, and then um, all the west. To see the west side, it's all rocky beaches. The east side is sandy beaches. There's surfers on the east side snorkeling on the west side. That's amazing. It was crazy. Yeah, it was. It was crazy, and and just the the juxtaposition of the the hotels and the resorts, mm-hmm. and then the towns. Oh, it's 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 unbelievable. And, and you're thinking, do they not donate any, do they give anything back to these communities yeah. besides jobs? Mm-hmm. I don't and know. probably not very high paying jobs. I wonder. Probably these people, not. The people at the resort though, they get really good tips. Mm-hmm. So, okay. So was yours an all inclusive? Yes. And you, but, and then you still tip on top of yes. that. Yes. Okay. So when th- that, that has been a shift over the last 10 years, because f- 10, 15 years ago, you'd go, you were specifically told by I am sandals, whatever, not to bring tips. Don't bring tips. The tips are paid out. But then when, when Beth and I went on mm-hmm. our honeymoon and went to Cancun mm-hmm. at, af- like at the very end, we were seeing people tipping and we're like, are we supposed to tip? We were both told previous, mm. don't bring money, don't bring tips. So the first yeah. time we went, we didn't. Second time we did. Um, so that has been a change. The, the other thing is also if you tip in there early in the week, that's that's your best time to tip if you know they're going to be there because then they take really good care mm-hmm. of you. So Emmanuel was awesome. That is a pro tip. Luis was awesome. And they were constantly right there. And yep. bringing, bringing the drinks without even asking. Mm-hmm. They would just bring a new drink and yeah. grab your glass. And that, that is what we did our first day there. Yeah. We tipped the bartender by the swim bar always a ask, lot. But always ask. Are you here all week? Right. Before you give them money. Oh, he's going on paternity leave <laughs> for six months starting tomorrow. And I just gave him a hundred bucks. <laughs> yeah. That's like, so you got to ask them the <laughs> Make sure you know what they're Tip at the beginning. Make sure they're scheduled for the week. Right. Yes, absolutely do that. So yeah, that was, uh, that was lesson learned. That is funny. Yeah. You got to um, make sure that they're actually yeah. on the schedule. So we were, we were mostly at the swim up bar, which was empty because the, the, the hotel was at 85% capacity yeah if not more did you pee in the pool um everybody did of course not one, did. i didn't see one person of get course. out of the pool of course um, you but don't. we met a great group of people from arkansas yeah and they're hu- and they're they're ecstatic about the possibility of the college world series mm-hmm. and i don't know what happened this last weekend i'm not well, sure kind of ironic because nebraska is playing we're recording this on monday and yeah. tonight they're playing arkansas in the winner take all uh, to go to the super regional, so it's either going to be Arkansas, it's either or, Arkansas or Nebraska. yeah, going to the super regional. So Nebraska could be bumping Arkansas out of the because um, a lot of NCAA people tournament. have been talking about having Van Horn come back mm-hmm. with because he this guy and his family their intent is to come obviously because they're huge supporters of the school and so he, well, I hope they don't have the to, opportunity. I hope Nebraska yeah. bumps oh my them God. out of there. Speaking of which, too, I got a little crap because I'm from Nebraska. Uh, there were a lot of games at the pool, mm-hmm. and so one of them was throwing a football through. These little circles. And they, they were trying to find more people. So one of the people that we were talking to said, she's from Nebraska, make her throw. And I was like, we don't, we run it. Yeah. Like, but we do throw it on occasion. Yeah. And I throw, I, I hit, I hit the target three times, but it didn't go all the way through. That's typical it for a Nebraska quarterback. It hits the target, but it never, it was like bounced lands. off their hands. It was like it's ex- dead hands. It's exactly the story of the last four years. <laughs> Played out there in the Cozumel Like, pool. I can't get it much closer. Can you work with me? <laughs> People holding the target. Can you work with But anyway. So, yeah. So, I didn't win any prizes doing that. Uh, but, but, yeah. It was it was a lot of... There's a lot more stories. Some more things will come back to memory as we When the alcohol progress. finally gets out of your system. Yeah. that's the, Oh, and I brought back some amazing tequila. I found out I really like tequila. I've never liked it before. And I think it has to do with quality. 
Oh, right. Well, that's with everything. Right? With everything. You find, And you you think, I'm not going to spend 100 bucks on a bottle or whatever, but you, you take a sip Shop of that whiskey free. or whatever. Right? So I, yeah. I, I brought some back with me that they don't have here that I got at the Duty Free. So do you drink it just neat over, over uh, ice? With, um, I drink it with some soda water and um, lime juice. Okay. I don't like margaritas. They, they talk back to me mm-hmm. generally. So you get heartburn. So, but this worked. And then I um, salt the, gra- the glass and then just shot. So how's that work into your, your, your diet? Your, I lost weight this week. Really? Yes. Well, that's a bunch of BS. Isn't that ridiculous? I'm going back. Well, probably because, because (laughs) because even though you're drinking and peeing in the pool all day long, you're, you're up, you're moving, you're jumping around, you're walking through the water. You're you're active. I ate everything I wanted Mm -hmm. and they had the best guacamole on earth. And then they'd have buffets morning, noon, and night. Right. And I just, I, I had French toast. I, I eat chocolate. I, I'm you like, lost weight? And I, lo- I weighed myself. I'm like, well, time to see what the damage is. You- I, Saturday morning, I'm like getting around. I'm like, oh, God. Oh, I wouldn't go have done that. You're brave for doing so that. I, I stepped on the scale. I was like, what? <laughs> this is awesome. <laughs> I love tequila. <laughs> I do. <laughs> I'm gonna be I'm gonna be a size six and a terror. Just my liver is gonna be tortured, but I'm gonna be a size six. Gosh damn it! So I know you do off the vodka train now. You're on tequila. I kind of uh, yeah, because well, see, they didn't you know they had in in room you had four bottles. They were in a, like the little servers that you mm-hmm. just put your glass under and it serves, and that was all included. So you had four bottles of alcohol in your room, and then you had all the mixers in the refrigerator. Everything's included in the fridge, so just feel free to take what you want. There's snacks over here. They had potato right, chips and all that. It was crazy. So the fact that you lost weight pisses so, me right? off. Right? <laughs> so I had to call down and ask him to send up. Uh, I said, can you send up six ounces of Kahlua or, or whatever coffee liqueur you have? And then I said, I need a, a small container of cream, and I need some more soda water. Oh, okay. Yeah, we can, we can make a drink. Nope, nope. Just send it up here. They'll be fine. Because they, they weren't making it right. Because I wanted my Bulldogs. Mm-hmm. Like my Bulldogs, but with soda water instead of Coke. And so they brought all that up. And then I just had to replenish my supply. So I'd make my Bulldog-ish type drinks at night. But I drink tequila all day. <laughs> Boom. So I am not off any train. <laughs> I am now on two. So. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Wow. So there's tequila in the day. Oh, how night. the tides have turned. You're judging people that are, you're, you're already talking crap about first class yeah. not being good enough. Yeah. And you found tequila. And I was right. And you were right. <laughs> and you were right. <laughs> I told, told you, you so. so. <laughs> I knew that was coming. <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, all right. You guys text us um, 402-403-9478 if you want to talk crap about the other 1% like Jill is. <laughs> now that she's part of the 1%. Thanks for listening. JT Podcast, a Huda Media Production.